Hey everyone, I'm Nikhilesh and I'm Kushal. We're, We're the two broke scientists. On today's episode, we're going to have a cycle race. The start lines all the way up there. I'll be riding a typical red Dutch bike with pedal brakes and blue colored all weather tires. And I, on the other hand, will be riding a typical old man's bike with a basket. Three, two. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Why? You'll find out at the end of the race. Cheater. Three. Two, one, go! <laughs> A few moments later We both know that you won only because of drag. Yeah, I was smart enough to reduce my drag. Okay, let me tell you a story. In 1752, there was a scientist named Jean de Lambert. He was faced with an interesting problem. He had proved that in theory, the drag force is zero on a body moving with constant velocity relative to the fluid. But he knew that couldn't be true. In reality, a body in fluid flow always faces resistance, or in other words, drag. This was the famous de Lambert's paradox. Drag is the component of force that opposes the motion of a body moving through a fluid. Hmm, doesn't that remind you of something? Hilesh, do you know how much aircraft spend on fuel every year? No idea, how much? They spend 149 billion dollars. Oh. Okay, apart from the great acting, that's a really interesting point. Aircraft spend all that money just to cover up losses caused by drag. Drag affects motion at all scales, from the movement of ships, cars and cycles, all the way down to the swimming of sperm cells. So drag is the reason why I find it difficult to cycle to college every day? Yeah, all this makes drag sound like a really bad guy. And it can be, but as it turns out, drag can be pretty useful as well. Let's look at the origins of drag. To see what causes drag, Let's zoom in to the surface of a body moving through a fluid. Because of something called the no-slip boundary condition, the fluid molecules closest to the surface get stuck and they pull on the layers of fluid above them through viscosity, which slows them down. This creates the boundary layer, which is the layer of fluid which pulls back the object. The layers of fluid moving at different velocities in a boundary layer cause shear on the object, which we call as skin friction drag. But that's not the whole story. There is another major source of drag. To understand that, let's take a simple analogy. Think of a marathon runner who has run tens of miles and is completely gassed out. If he had to suddenly face strong opposing winds, he would probably just give up and look for ways to avoid the wind. Now consider fluid flowing around an object. We know that in the flow, there are regions of high and low pressure. Imagine if the marathon runner were a particle of fluid in the boundary layer. Because of viscosity, this particle would move very slowly, have low energy, and also have to go against an increasing pressure. But sometimes, the particles just give up and find the path of least resistance. This is what we call flow separation. Because the fluid was not able to recover to a higher pressure, this separated fluid leaves a region of low pressure behind the object called a wake. This difference in pressure between the front and the rear of the object gives rise to a large amount of drag that we call Pressure drag. Pressure drag is something that we always try to avoid. This is exactly why we try and make objects as streamlined as possible. Objects that are not streamlined are called bluff bodies. And these objects have a large wake behind them. So we have skin friction drag and we have pressure drag. And from what we discussed, it looks like the shape is the most important factor that determines the drag on an object. Well, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Shape does play an important role. But the drag on an object mm -hmm. depends on several other parameters. Can you guess what they are? I guess a truck has more drag than a car. So maybe the size of the object? Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
The more area an object has to oppose the motion of the air, the more drag that it develops. But another important factor on which drag depends on is velocity. The formula of drag shows that it depends on the square of the velocity. That means if we double the speed, the drag increases by 4 times. The coefficient of drag shows the dependence on the shape. A streamlined body has a lower drag coefficient than a bluff body. Okay, that's a lot of information. So let's recap it a bit. Suppose we had an airfoil, which is a streamlined body, and a sphere, which is a bluff body, which have the same frontal area, means the area which faces the wind. The airfoil would experience less drag because the coefficient of drag is less. Now suppose we had the same shape, but two different areas. The drag coefficient is the same, but the drag of the one with the larger area is more. Exactly. But like we said, drag is not always the bad guy. It can be pretty useful as well. Remember when we talked about the wake behind an object? Because the wake is a region of low pressure, the air starts recirculating. Okay, that CFD looked really cool, but do you want to do an experiment? Sure, let's go. Mm -hmm. When we place the paper parallel to the axis of the flow, it acts like a streamlined body and there's no separation. But the moment we tilt it and make it perpendicular, there's huge separation and you see clearly the wake form behind the paper. Let's consider a tennis ball in fluid flow. As the air now flows over the tennis ball, there's a region of low pressure right behind it. Now, if a golf ball is present in this region of low pressure, it experiences less drag than it would have when there was no tennis ball. This effect is called slip streaming and it is used in many sports from Formula 1 ice skating and cycling. But just to be clear, hmm. slip streaming helps the object behind the leader save some energy. But is there any case where the object itself benefits from drag? Yes. Have you heard of drag driven turbines and sailing yachts? Mm -hmm. They use drag to produce electricity and for propulsion. That's really interesting. So drag can be pretty useful as well. <laughs> Precisely. Now that you guys know how drag works, can you think of ways that we can use to reduce drag? If you do, do leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching the video again guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.